All right, hey and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can calibrate the Abacus Johnson Cook Plasticity Model to uh, tension data that I have. And also, in this case, I'm going to calibrate a failure model to this data. I am then going to show you how you can use this uh, material model with a failure condition in a uh, Abacus explicit simulation where you have element deletion activated. So you can see how you do all of these steps um, in, in your own work. So here's the data. It's tension uh, data at two strain rates, monotonic, and then I have some cyclic data with stress relaxation. So this data is obviously very difficult to capture for the Johnson Cook model, but I'm gonna try to work with this here in our example. Um, the first step is to calibrate the Johnson Cook model without failure, and then we'll activate the failure model. So I'm gonna do that by first setting the material model. I'm gonna roll, scroll down here. I'm gonna pick the Abacus Johnson Cook option. I'm going to say yes. Here's, here's our default set of parameters. Um, and I'm going to run it once and see what it looks like. You see the prediction looks like this. It's not particularly great. The error is about 37%, but this is just the starting point. And we have a Young's modulus, we have some plasticity parameters, and then we have a strain rate dependent behavior of the plasticity in this case. So we can try to manipulate these by hand, but I am simply going to start running it. But before I do, I do that, I'm going to uh, indicate in our graph here that this particular test was done to failure. So double click on it. I go to miscellaneous. I'm going to set load case run to failure. And I'm going to repeat that for the other monotonic test to say that it was run to failure. All it does is to change the graph, put the marker at the end so it's clear when you look at this graph, that this contains failure data. So I'm going to start running the calibration by clicking Run Calibration. I'm going to use um, the automatic extensive method here. Uh, it's going to use the default settings. I'm going to save my calibration automatically during the optimization. And I'm going to start running this. And we'll see how, how it goes. Okay, so I, I'm stopping the calibration at this point. You can see that the predictions here look reasonably good during monotonic loading, but the unloading predictions are just linear and then uh, predicts way too much permanent deformation. This is a very common issue with the Johnson Cook model when you apply it to polymers, but that's beside the point of this uh, discussion here. Uh, the idea now is that we'll use this model and we will try to calibrate a Johnson Cook failure model to this data. So to, wait, to do that, I'm going to first save this calibration and then I'm going to uh, save, I'm going to export the material model that we just calibrated into an Abacus IMP file. I'm going to save that so we have a file with these parameters. And then I'm going to save this uh, M calibration file into a new name. I'm going to call it xdata2. It's a continuation. As I mentioned, the calibration is a two step here. First, we calibrate the material model, which is what we've done. And the second step is to calibrate the failure parameters, which is what we're going to start doing now. So I saved as. So this file now will be the file I'm going to work on for the failure model calibration. Uh, before I do that, let's look at the file we just exported. So that would be this file. I'm opening this file here. I'm going to close some old files we don't need. So here is our definition of the Johnson Cook plasticity model. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. I'm going to minimize this window. And back in M calibration, I'm going to now turn on failure in this particular material model. So if you look here, there is really no failure parameters available as it looks at this point. So what we can do here, though, is we can switch over to Abacus template. And then we click on the Johnson Cook plasticity model. And then there is some, you're going to manipulate this template so that it contains the parameters we want to calibrate. So I'm going to paste in from the clipboard the material model that we just calibrated. The first command is star material. That should not be here. Uh, this template does not need the name in it. So I'm going to remove that. I remove the com uh, comments. I'm going to remove the density too. Those are not supposed to be here in the template version of M calibration. But we do need star elastic. Here are the parameters. I don't want to search for these parameters it's already been calibrated. So I'm just going to leave these as they are here. And you can see in the template that came here, it already had those, but they were defined as variables. You can see the percent signs that give you those. So I'm going to get rid of those 
And here you can see, let me get rid of this and see, if needed, can also activate damage initiation evolution. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go back here, remove these comments. This is now store damage initiation. And here are our damage initiation terms. And then damage evolution. And this needs to be command. So this is now a valid abacus material definition for Johnson Cook plasticity with damage initiation and damage evolution. To use this and calibrate this in M calibration, we need to make this into a template. So to do that, I'm going to define this number here to be a variable. So I do a percent sign. This is, uh, I'm going to call it uh, E1 for strain 1 equals to 0, 0, 005, and I do percent sign. And this is the rate 1. So this is the failure strain at that rate. I'm going to call it R1, rate 1. And this is then my failure strain 2 at this particular rate. So this is R2 equal to percent sign. That will turn these numbers into variables. And finally, I'm going to make this a uh, damage parameter. I'm going to call it dam here. Now I have a template that contains exactly what we need for what we're trying to do. So I'm saving this. You see that the parameters here now are the parameters we defined with the names we gave them. I'm saving this file. For calibrating this model, we're going to turn off the, mon the cyclic data. We, can we don't want to calibrate the failure model to cyclic data. We already have a stress strain data uh, model available. So we want to only use the two monotonic tests at two different strain rates, and we want to calibrate these parameters to match the data better. So. Let's see here, what do, what do these things do? We have two strain values and we have two rate values. Just, um, we want to set the strain rates to be similar to the data that we have. So I'm going to make this one 0 0.001 corresponding to the slower test. And I'm going to make the other rate R2 0 0.1, which it's ordered this. And then I don't need to search for them because be, these values are what I want them to be. I do need to search for E1 and E2. These are the strain values for the onset of failure. And the damage value is how much strain it takes for it to fail once it starts uh, to break. So here is our uh, setup. I want to make some other changes here to make this run a little better on the computer. So the first thing I will do is I go to Preferences. I'm going to go to Abacus Solver. So under Abacus Solver, I'm going to make sure the settings are what I like. It says delete Abacus files after the simulation is completed. I don't need that, so I leave that not checked. It says use hybrid, hybrid elements. In this case, uh, this is an elastic plastic material model. We don't need hybrid elements. We're so going to turn it off. I don't want double precision. But I do want to use reduced integration. And uh, I want to save the files in the same directory as M calibration. So this is the setting that I want to use for this calculation. That's the first thing. Then I'm going to go to these two load cases and manipulate them a little bit to make sure they're set up properly. I'm going to first double click on the fast one. Uh, there, there is a feature here that allows us to um, add additional experimental data that is useful for failure model calibration. So I go to miscellaneous, I set failure, data, failure time from data. It extracts the time at which the simulation, the experimental test failed, 21 seconds in this case. And then it will add zero stress values at the end. This will allow us to easier find the failure parameters in case they fail too late. Otherwise, it becomes a one-sided calibration, which is harder to perform. So I recommend setting this when you do a failure calibration. I want this solver now. We have some choices. This is an abacus material model we're calibrating. I'm going to use abacus standard as the solver here. I think that will probably run a little faster. So picking Abacus standard as the solver, I go to time stepping. Uh, I want it uh, to run with a 200 increments in Abacus standard to solve this. So those are the settings that I want to pick for this one here. I'm saving this. And then we'll go to the second load case and take a look what's going on here. I'm going to go to miscellaneous, set failure time from data. I want to use an Abacus standard solver. And uh, I'm going to go to time stepping. I'm going to use 200 increments for this one as well. And I save this file. And now we're going to try to see if this works here. I'm going to click run once. 
And while we wait for this, we can take a look and see what's going on in the window behind here. You can see that this is running because this is orange down here. And while that's running in the uh, in this Explorer window, we can see that it's running both of these Abacus simulations at, uh, at the same time. Of course, it allowed it to use two uh, CPUs. So it's using one CPU for each at this point. Uh, you can change that depending on how many CPUs you want to use for the calibration. And it has an STA5 for each, and it seems to running both of these uh, right now. So we'll see how long it takes to run this uh, particular test case uh, that we have set up. All right, so the calculation finished, and we can see that the, the failure occurs very early. So if I zoom in a little bit here, you see that the fails uh, around, the, you know, I don't know what this is, 10, 20% strain here. And that's because we have very low strain failures values here. We can clearly increase these, and that will improve the performance of, the, of this particular initial guess. So what I will do is I will... Um, allow these to be different because the failure strains are indeed different for these two strain rates, but I want them to be much larger. So I'm going to make it 0 0.7 perhaps and make this perhaps also 0 0.7. Um, so this will be the, the starting point for my actual calibration. I'm going to let this calibrate a little bit and then we'll take a look at see how this uh, goes. All right, so I'm stopping this uh, calibration very early. Uh, we've done four functional evaluations, and uh, the error is already pretty good. So I think for our purposes of demonstrating how you would do this, this is good enough for that. We we'll see that it has increased the failure strain values or changed the failure strain values a little bit, and we get a pretty reasonable failure prediction at this point. So um, what I will do is uh, simply wait for Abacus to stop the current evaluation. And here it is, it just stopped. Then I'm gonna turn off here in under miscellaneous, this additional time option that I activated for the calibration. I'm gonna do that for both of these load cases. I just select it and de press delete on my keyboard and I save it. And here we can see now the predictions that uh, in this case, if we run it, it, let it run the calibration longer, we would have even better uh, predictions. We see that we have matched the failure strain reasonably well. We get a, a drop in the stress after that. So this, this is how you would calibrate the Johnson-Cook failure model to this uh, particular data set. To use this, I can uh, just export this model. I'm going to export it as an Abacus IMP file. I'm going to call it uh, this. The default name is good enough. And then I'm going to open this file that we just created with the text editor. And here it is. So this is now our calibrated material model. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. I'm going to open a test case that I already prepared for this. So here's an Abacus IMP file. I'm going to search for the solid selection portion. You see the material is supposed to be PE. I have an old material model definition here. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to paste in the new one that we just created. I'm going to put that in here. We have all the definitions we want. And if we scroll to the bottom here, you see that this is now an Abacus explicit simulation. I'm going to run this uh, as it is with this material model. And we'll take a look what the results will look like. So minimize these windows. I have an Abacus command window here. I'm going to run this file, it's called uh, tension notched X Johnson Cook. So I'm pressing enter here, and then in a few seconds, Abacus should start this calculation for us using uh, the material model and this test case that I already had prepared. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so the simulation is finished. Uh, well, let's take a look at the results, see what we got here. So I have a file, that, an ODB file we can open here with a command line argument for Abacus CAE. And um, in a few seconds, uh, CAE should uh, start. So here's our results. Uh, I actually simulated an axisymmetric uh, case, but I activated um, elements sweeping here so we can see kind of the 3D uh, geometry a little better. 
this is now a case. Let me go back and like this. All right, I lost location there. There we go. So you see that this is a cylinder with a deep notch in it. And um, we can look at the results as we deform this. This is being pulled in tension vertically. And I can plot uh, strain, perhaps, is a good quantity to plot. The max principal strain is about 50% at this point, And we know that it fails around 70 80% strain. It's very localized there. Uh, but that's what it looks like in this test case. And now you can step forward in time and see that it's pulling it apart here. It's being stressed and strain increases. This should be really close to uh, the onset of failure here. We'll see what happens as we continue pulling on it. And we'll see that it stretches more and more. And it's starting to rip. You see that now the material becomes reaching failure rapidly and it just propagates right through. So this example uh, shows you how you can use M calibration to calibrate the Johnson Cook plasticity model with uh, a failure condition that's strain rate dependent, how you can export that model and then use it in an abacus explicit simulation with element deletion. If you have any questions, uh, write them in the comments below. Thanks.